We know you love us, but the information on our podcast is provided for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute for professional advice of any kind. If you or anyone you know needs professional help, please seek mental health services. Welcome to the Date Podcast, the show for anyone navigating the dating and relationship world. We interview celebrities, talk pop news, discuss dating do's and don'ts, and debate relationship topics. We are available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe and review if you like what you hear. Check out our website, datepodcast.com, for more information. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, let's get on with the show. Hey, it's Zorik, host of the Date Podcast, and we're excited for another episode this week because we have two really cool girls on the show. Uh, who do we have? Oh, we oh have who do we have? <laughs> That's me. We Pressing have, buttons. Okay, we have Julie and Danielle, who are known for their foreplay dating app oh foreplay dating app cool foreplay. but it's oh, both like f-o-u-r like four right foreplay f-o-u-r four. foreplay yeah. <laughs> uh okay so we'll speak to them about their their uh their dating app uh, we'll actually talk about, uh, we kind of want to know like where they got the idea and where they're from. And there's always this like epiphany, right? Like, uh, it's something, something switches on and I'm, and they're like, oh my gosh, let's start this dating up. So w we love those stories. Don't we, Emma? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So we'll it talk to them. It makes me believe that one day I'll have my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will, Emma. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk to them about that, and then we'll talk about the news. But okay. have you guys had um, a COVID test before? No. Oh, yeah. you, you guys have had? We're, we're, we're not only app co-founders, we're also healthcare providers, so we've had plenty. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I had my first one over the weekend, uh, and it was, I mean, it, it was as unpleasant as it looks, um, actually. Well, I felt like the yeah. called me like in tears crying. I did not cry. It hand. just, it just felt like the, the, the Q-tip went like out of my brain. That's what it felt like. But no, I, I just was <laughs> feeling weird and, um, just feeling bad last week. And then I was like, let me just get a COVID test just to make sure. And it, it was nothing, but, uh, it was a PCR test guys. The, uh, yeah. 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 We're, yeah. All, out the we're all about that PCR. Love yeah. That. Yeah. So, is that the best test to get? Yeah, that's the best one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the I've more had, painful uh, one is the best one. I've had a, you know it, it really depends on um on like the technique of the person who's doing it because I've had oh. some it and it just felt like a little scratch in the back of my throat. I had another person do it and mm. I thought it was gonna like pop out the top yeah. of my head. Yeah. So it really all depends on you know the nurse. I the, well actually. Okay. I, I do them on Mondays in my office, and I'm told by my patients that I'm very gentle. <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. So if you need a COVID test. I will, I, will, I will fly out to New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Emma, what did you, what was interesting about your week this week? Anything? Mm, fall started Tuesday. Oh, yeah? Okay. And cool. I refuse to wear pants yet, so I've been just wearing <laughs> dresses. Are you wearing pants right now or nothing right now? Is that what's happening? I'm wearing a dress. Okay. A very fall printed dress. Got it's it. Pretty. Thank you. But yeah, now I refuse to wear pants. Yeah. Hmm. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. That's all fall. No other cool yeah. things. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. Anything for you guys, Julie, Danielle, anything cool this week? Mm. Julie, do you want to share what happened uh, right before the episode? Oh, yeah. So something really cool just happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on a date, a socially distant date, um, which I have not done actually in quite a few weeks. Oh. Um, so I was like, you know, let me just go be social. 
and it's fine because at 10 o'clock I'll, I'll be back by nine. Cause at 10 o'clock I have, you know, the date podcast and you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm wrapping up the date at 10 o'clock and I look at my phone and it's, Hey, friendly reminder, we're here waiting. And I was like, Oh, oh no. <laughs> and I felt I felt this like vindication that I knew the time of the podcast. <laughs> I said earlier that I thought that it was well, granted I said I thought it was also a different time, but <laughs> but but I always get everything wrong and she always gets everything right. So I was a little bit oh. like, there was a little piece of me that was like, wow, I am available. <laughs> I am the one who's gonna get on the podcast. Yeah, this, yeah. Was, this was a difficult pill for me to swallow and I probably won't sleep for the next three nights. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, I wasn't trying to like share that part. I was just trying to share the date part. <laughs> okay. oh, More importantly, oh, your the, date. The date is insignificant. It has all been erased by the fact that <laughs> Wait a second, wait a second. Was it insignificant? No, 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 that's really mean. I don't mean for the person that I was on a date with. It just was, I don't care about that now because mm. I, I'm now late to a meeting that I don't, I don't do that. So right. it's hard for me. Right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Nice. Okay. So like in the grand scheme of things, it's like the day is kind of a little null and void because of like everything else. Okay. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Is going well? Drinking ticket or something. Like that's how I feel. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, was the date even going well? Um, you know, it, well, that's, we can get into that. Did you have to <laughs> cut the date forward? No. So what's super interesting actually is I said I had to be, I said I had to be back to my friend's apartment at nine. I didn't say why, which got awkward when he said why. Oh. And oh. then I, that I promised her that I would do something with her, mm. which I kept it, I kept it vague. vague because, you know, I don't lead ever with the fact that I co-founded Foreplay. I don't, that's not where I, I lie on dates. Like that's, I need to know you before I okay. share that. Like it's really a personal part of my life. So he just thinks I'm a physician assistant, which I am. Um, but who uh, has to be? Who has to be <laughs> back by nine? <laughs> uh, so, so it wasn't that good, obviously. Um, you know, it was a, it was it was a fine first date. Um, we got a little heavy into politics. Oh, yeah, which is a heavy, heavy topic. Didn't mean for it to go there. The reason why it got brought up was because we, Danielle and I just watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix. Have oh. you guys watched it? I heard it's so good. I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen it. Oh my God. It's so good and scary at the same time. So scary. So we were talking about how, you know, we are only shown things that we agree with on social media for the most part, which is why like we're all in our own way brainwashed because we're reinforcing our views because we only see that. So I kind of needed to know my audience. So I was like, I'm just wondering like, you know, did you, did you vote for Trump in 20, not that it matters to me, but did you vote for Trump in 2016? And then it started this whole political conversation that like was not, was not what I was, my intention was not that, but then it, mm -hmm. it went there and then I was just too far in. Wow. So second date or not sure yet? You know, probably not. Okay. okay. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> Which I always feel really bad about afterwards because it's, it's nothing about, Okay. So when you date and then you, the other person wants a second date and you don't or vice versa, you want the second date and the other person doesn't, it's so, it's sad because it's, so it's sad. like, yeah. the only thing you could take away from that is that the person didn't like me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a sad part of dating, which is why I wish I was on a foreplay date, honestly, because it would have been a way less romantic pressure situation. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll talk more about that uh, after the news. But uh, Emma, okay. let's, let's see what's what's in the news. Let's talk about a oh couple things. Oh, my gosh, things. you guys. My inner teen slash 20-year-old self was very excited about <laughs> What did you say, he Emma? He likes to cut me off. <laughs> what did you say? say, say I said, play the music. <laughs> like, you got so excited. <laughs> I know, cause, and he always cuts me off. That's why I was like, I'm getting too excited. I need to tell him to play All the right. music. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, two people were reunited over Zoom this past week. And I was like, oh my gosh. Two people. It, a beautiful couple who were like 92,000 royalty. Uh, Bobby Brown. No. No. Oh, uh. 92,000 royalty? Well, uh, like they're not really royalty, but they're like American royalty. Like they were like America's uh, like sweethearts. Oh, 
So like, oh, like Rachel, oh, what was her name? Love Hewitt. Love no. Jennifer, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Love Hewitt. Nope. Mm -mm. Um, who's the Sabrina the Teenage Sarah Witch? Michelle Sarah Michelle Gellar. No, no, no. 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 Sh oh. Shania Twain. No. Oh. I'm just going to tell y'all. Okay. Cameron Diaz. So, Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz? No. no, she's married to one of the Madden brothers. Oh. Mm. And has a baby. Oh, Cameron. Yeah. Okay, so Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston mm. reunited on Zoom. Nice. Huh? <gasps> and Brad Pitt. Yes, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt reunited because they, um, so Sean Penn, like, um, cre like made a, a table read for uh, fast, fast Times at Richmond High, which I've never seen. But it piqued my interest over the fact that Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt like did a table read over Zoom. And it was so cute because at first Jennifer was like, hey Pitt. And then Brad was like, hey Aniston. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and they played, uh, they played like a, like each other's love interest in the movie. So they played characters that were love interest. Um, and I, like, I, I swear I felt like everyone that, like, saw the clip was just like, oh my gosh, they could get back together. They're probably, they're not, but, you know, like, that's what everybody wants. But she's better than him. I know! <laughs> I know she is. He's so hot, though. He's were so you hot. A, were you a Brangelina or a, what was the other, what was the other? Uh, uh, no. Brand no, I was not Brangelina, okay? So whenever they got divorced, I was like totally, like, I don't know, Jennifer Aniston didn't care, but I felt <laughs> the redemption for Jennifer Aniston, okay? Me too. Me too. Yeah. I, I really, I really wanted Jennifer to like, just, just feel, I agree. <laughs> what? No, I, what? I do. I, I agree. You're like, like, you're like one of Jen now. Like, you're like <laughs> best friends with all of a sudden. Like Jen, we're Jen, we're Jen. Yeah, with Jen, right? We just want her to like feel empowered and be like, yeah, you know, like you hey. lost this great piece of human. Yeah. Like you can beg all you want and I'm still going to say no. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yes. All I know is they are two beautiful people. It's yes. still, still two beautiful people. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Sean Penn was actually in the original Fast Times at Richmond High and he played Jeff Spicoli. Like I said, I've never seen the movie, so I don't know. Um, other people that were um, part of the table read were Morgan Freeman, he was the narrator, Julia Roberts, um, Shia LaBeouf, who was smoking weed from his car for the role. <laughs> <laughs> when is he not? Um, huh? when, is, when is he not? He's always smoking weed. I don't know. And also Matthew McConaughey was part of the table read, which was really funny. So it, so it was cute to see like Julia Roberts like smile whenever like Jennifer and Brad were like flirting with each other because it was just so cute. Like she was also just like super delighted. Like I think we all were. Uh, so it was just really cool to see. Um, so Sean Penn did this because he was raising funds um, for the nonprofit that he co-founded, which is CORE, um, Community Organized Relief Effort, which at the moment is responding to the coronavirus crisis. Um, so this was just part for him to get more funds for his charity. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, awesome. so cool. I love it. Love to see all of those people all coming together. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah for Such sure. Talent. I know, I know. Um, and it's just so cute to see them all too because some of them were like dressed in character and other people were not. Um, yeah. Like Shia was not. <laughs> Shia was in character. Oh, he was. He was trying to be in character as much as he could be, you know, even wow. with weed. He's yeah. a wild um, For some reason, he's always, he's like just always 16. Is he not? I feel like he doesn't age. Right. He doesn't, he's no. No, oh, he, he kind of looks old in this video. Really? Oh, yeah. Just a little bit. Oh, Did he shave? Yeah. Is he like scraggly or something? Or is it the way he dressed? No, here, I'll share my screen so y'all can see it. The, the listeners, uh, <laughs> you should post this. The listeners, yeah, I'll post it or what? Yeah, yeah. let me see. Oh, it's being rude to me right now. But I think Shia, he he was on a tear for a little bit, right? He had a ton of ton of movies. I think Transformers was really good, and then yes. kind of just kind of kind of just you know disappeared. He 
on for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Glad mm-hmm. it's yeah welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here he is. Wait, oh, he's wow. seven, suddenly 70. Wow. On the right side. And this, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, <gasps> see? <laughs> what is going on there? Wait, right? Very attracted to him. <laughs> you to Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, he yes. looks really good there. I'm <laughs> very attracted to him. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he actually looks that's his best he's ever looked. That was a very, I just like the badass, the badassery of that video. Yeah. I'll send you this link so that you can watch it to your own um, <laughs> and just like obsess over it. <laughs> okay. All right, Emma. Sharing. What else? What else um, okay, so let's move on. So the Emmys were this past weekend. I missed the first half because I forgot that the Emmys were happening. I didn't feel like there was so much like of a buildup or advertising for the Emmys. Now, I could be wrong, but that's how I felt. You're so right. I, yeah. I, I feel like people were posting on social media, the winners, and I was mm-hmm. like, wait a second, like, when did that even happen? Yeah, right? And I love awards. Like, Zorik will tell you, like, during award season, all I want to talk about is awards. I think, like, I'm over it because I don't know what's going on, but I love it. So I watched for some of it, and it was kind of like, meh. Who were the major, um, the major winners? So the major year? winners yeah. were, like, everybody from Shit's Creek. If you have not seen that show... I 100% recommend it. It's hilarious. And I feel like the more that you watch it, like the funnier it gets. Like I binged it like twice during us, like having to isolate. Um, I binged it twice because I was just like, this makes me happy. (laughs) Yeah, my mom loves that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never saw it, but. I watched a few episodes. What I've heard is exactly what you said, that the more you watch it, the funnier it becomes. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. When you know the characters, like the predictability of the characters is what makes it so funny. Also, that's Mm -hmm. really TV's son in real life. It's really his son. Mm -hmm. So it's. uh (laughs) Yes, they have the same eyebrows. Um, So, um, so basically, Catherine O'Hara won um, lead actress in a TV series, and then Eugene Levy won um, lead actor in a um, TV series, and then um, Mark Ruffalo. Did Mark? No. Ruff- oh, he didn't win anything. Oh wait, Mark Ruffalo did win. That's right, because I was just like, dang, he's mm. yeah, like hello. <laughs> um, and then um, and then David Levy also won. Um, the son won. Supporting, supporting role. No, what is it? It's the it's best supporting actor. Best supporting actor. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then um, Alexis. Her character's name is Alexis. She won um, supporting actress. And then the series won like best comedy show. So it was basically they were calling like the first half of the Emmys like the Shit's Creek like awards. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. And and people were kind of joking. They're like, I guess because we were all in quarantine, like everybody was binge watching on it. So all the Emmy Emmy voters like figured out this was a funny show. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Um, and was, I said his name wrong. It's Dan Levy. Sorry, I said David. Um, that's his character's name. But Dan Levy won supporting actor. Anyways, so nice. Huh? I can't hear music. <laughs> he likes to cut me off. He's like, um, and, oh, okay. He's like, okay. He's also like, like trying <laughs> to be discreet about it, but it's like you're the only person that's controlling it's the music. Like, so it's like we know you. I know. I have the camera, but you're also <laughs> turning up the music and blasting mm-hmm. her. <laughs> We've been doing this for like two years, and I still don't have my own soundboard. Can y'all believe Well, that? we're working on that. Okay, we're working she on that. That's a lie. Soundboard. She needs her own soundboard. He just says that to like so the guests don't yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> What else, so, Emma? What else? Last story okay. is Machine Gun Kelly. He's dating Megan Fox. And so if you guys remembered um, that they were rumored and then Brian Austin Green was like came out and said, like, yeah, we've actually been broken up. Um, Megan Fox and I have been broken up. And then like Machine Gun Kelly was like, yeah, we're together. Um, so they've been together for a while now. But apparently Machine Gun Kelly is saying that um, he said this is the first time that he has fallen in love no. is with Megan Ooh. Fox. I mean, I mean 
Austin, but I love Brian Austin. Too. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, she's she's very gorgeous. That woman. Yeah. She is yeah. very gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Very much so. But Machine Gun um, Kelly, do you guys know his music? Um, he's he's fairly new, right? Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I gotta admit, like I, I did just Google him while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> He's a rapper. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sorry, Machine Gun Kelly, but like Brian Austin Green, I'm with like Danielle. Like I'm gonna pick hmm. Brian Austin Green. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, the this like album that he has created. Um, he was like, I, you know, he's like, I fell in love for the first time. And so then he's like, I made this album. And so he, I was just like, I wasn't ready to fall in love at that point. But now, like, I am in, in love. And so it's a great experience to have. So he, like, basically says that he's so in love with her and he's happy to be with her. You know how many times I've said that when I've fallen in love? I mean, I think it's re- probably brand new, right? That's the reason why yeah. it's kind of... They've been together since, like, July, I think. Oh. No, they... Oh, they goodness. Have, they made it, like, public in July. Yeah. But good for him. Good for him. Good for them. Hopefully they take it the distance. We love love And here. then I gotta... I gotta... I gotta share this part because I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. It's not that I don't love love. It's just that sometimes I'm just like, okay. Um, so, <laughs> Megan Fox said, I knew right away that he was what I call a twin flame instead of a soulmate. A twin flame is actually where a soul has ascended into a high enough level that it can be split into two bodies at the same time. So we're actually two halves of the same soul, I think. And I said to him almost immediately because I felt it right away. You know, that's so weird because that's how I feel about Brian Austin Green. (laughs) 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 Who is that? Oh my gosh. No, wait, you also don't wait. You don't know who Brian Austin Green is? She's oh my gosh. She's gonna get voted off the island. Oh I, my I, gosh. Let me redeem myself. Let me redeem Did you ever watch? I, 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 I don't. I was a baby. He's like a I kind heartthrob. Of had hopes for us to be friends, like the three of us. But like, <laughs> I think it's just gonna be Julie and me now. <laughs> oh, but if you need a COVID test. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Julie said she has she has very gentle hands. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that it, Emma? Is that it? That's all I got. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so are you guys, um, are you guys best friends? Are you guys no. close? No. Do you guys know each other? <laughs> Very much. We're best. We're actually twin flames. Twin we are twin flames. flames. Oh, you're twin flames. Okay. Ah. We actually, we actually are. We actually are. That's the oh, okay. Thing. Okay. Um, so we are best friends. We met in college. Um, we lived in the same sorority. Um, so that's probably when we got the closest. Um, and then after college, we've been in separate places. We're finally reunited in New York City for the first time in like six years. Oh, wow. And, um, and it's great. We decided to start a company together. Huh. <laughs> I know. And that is a big decision um, to, to, to start a company with a friend because you guys will argue there's ups there's downs there's fights there's good bad i mean you name it right i mean i'm sure you guys have experienced that i mean they say right like don't go into business with your friend or with your family i did both um so it's it's been quite uh the challenge but i think that we're really fortunate because we have such a unique relationship where we can just be like look you're you're not being cool right now and vice versa and we don't hold grudges and we just like we brush it off like we have our whatsapp chat which is this is when we're talking business strictly business don't wow. ever talk about it don't, don't ever talk, talk about, about a date fr- don't talk about <laughs> friendship here this is this is called foreplay this is where we talk foreplay then we have iMessage which is like hey, my date went really well. Or like, hey, I'm running 20 minutes late to a podcast that I'm supposed to be on because I was on a date. But if I'm supposed to be on our podcast, then I would do that in Right, it, it does get kind of hairy sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it does. Because, yeah. you know, this morning, for example, um, I was coming to work from home at, at Danielle's apartment. So I messaged her in the WhatsApp saying like, what time does the office open today? You know, kidding around because it's her apartment. And then I texted her being like, Hey, do you want to like go for a run at lunch? Because it's like they're different things. One is business, right. and one is 
happens. Mm -hmm. And you have to separate. You have to separate. Okay. Well, here at the Date Podcast, we like to test people uh, in relationships. (laughs) Uh, And so (laughs) we have a game called the Co-Founder Game uh, uh, or the Newlywood Game. And so, Emma, right, we're going to ask them some questions. This is our this is our game show. Music. Uh, we're going to ask you some questions. So I guess uh, Julie will ask um, you a question about Danielle. And you just, we'll see what happens. Okay? And let's see if you get the right answer. <laughs> All right, you nervous? Take a deep breath. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think Danielle's gonna know every answer, and I'm gonna look like a really you bad know friend. Everything about me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's. Do okay. Let Let's do this. So it's just a few questions, just to get everything, you know, get the, you know, blood blood rolling. I guess, you know, get a little. If it uh, makes you feel better, there's there's a there's a few that I don't know about my best friend. Yeah. Okay. Just because I always get confused with something else. Okay. So I'll go with the first question, and you'll get the gist of it. So. Uh, let's, let's go with Julie. Julie, are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Julie, what is Danielle's favorite food? Oh my goodness. I mean like the most loaded question ever. (laughs) Because sometimes she has, well you love, you love pie. But I feel like you love like food that I don't like, like you love like bolognese. Ooh, she's, ooh, she's getting creative. Yeah, get more creative. Get more creative. Um, no, you can't. You no. can't chat about it. You just have to think it through. <laughs> she can't help you. <laughs> Thanks. I know this is supposed to be a straight up answer, but I don't know food. So when I go out to eat, I need to ask what does this mean? I, I'm not educated enough to know. Oh, she's uneducated. I'm she's uneducated. uneducated and cannot complete the answer. But you do love she's, You do love food. You love Thai food. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the answer? What is it? Okay, I've always said it too. It's rice pudding. Oh, yes. Oh, it's goodness. It's for you love rice to rinse is an <laughs> Okay, uh, Daniel, are you ready for your question? So ready. Okay. Emma, you ready to uh, ask the next one? All right, Danielle. Do you know how many brothers or sisters Are you joking? Julie has? <laughs> of course, because they're also my brothers and sisters. <laughs> he has one sister and two brothers. I would also like to add, you love porn to play. I do love porn to play. She redeemed her mom. I do love porn to play. Wow, she really pulled that out. She pulled that out of that. <laughs> so that was right, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll go a couple more. Uh, Julie, are you ready? Okay. Um, the question is, um, what is Danielle's star sign? Uh, February 2nd. Yeah, February 2nd. <laughs> you got it? Oh, I couldn't hear you. Okay, cool, cool. What is it? <laughs> Aquarius. Aquarius. Okay, okay. All right, Emma, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Danielle. What did Julie want to be when she grew up? I them these questions. A doctor. <laughs> is that true? Correct. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. God. I feel like Danielle gave you these questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought that was going to be hard for her. What would I want to be when I grew up? Do you know? Probably like a singer. A singer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last question, Julie. You ready? Last question. I'm ready. Um, if Danielle wins the lotto, how should... How would she spend the money? <laughs> Traveling. Ooh. Is that true? Is that true? I feel, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I do feel like there's an extra piece, and it's that I would breed golden retrievers. Oh, yeah, that's oh. it. <laughs> okay. Well, that was our game. So I hope you guys had a little bit of fun with that one. But... Okay. 
Are you good at Would you challenge you? But I would also travel with my yeah. husband. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you guys you are pretty have, you close. If you have the money, you can do it. Yeah. You can do both. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess back to the question about being best friends. Yeah, it just takes a lot to, to run a company um, mm. s- when mm-hmm. you guys are close because if it doesn't go right, I mean, I mean, this is like, I don't want to talk about this, but if things didn't go right, could you guys still kind of keep your relationship going as friends? So, tell them about the so clause. I'm literally about to tell, tell them about the clause. Okay. So let, me, no. let, let, me, let me tell you about the clause we have here. When we decided to organize as an LLC, we went through, because we're both healthcare providers, we went mm-hmm. through every negative outcome that could be and made, a, and made a if this, then this. Like a contingency plan. Right. right? Okay. So... I mean, our lawyer literally said, like, is everything okay? Because we were thinking of, like, the worst case scenario for everything. <laughs> like, if Danielle gets hit by a truck. Right. And, like, <laughs> literally, every, like, if one of us is institutionalized for six months. Like, everything that would be, like, really traumatic and horrifying. Uh-huh. We just said it very matter-of-factly. We're like, if wow. one of us is hospitalized, if one of us is this, we get to this, this one clause, and we go, if, God forbid. God forbid. We get into a fight. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, God for, I mean, God forbid. Like, commit me to the hospital for three months. <laughs> <laughs> but God forbid, God forbid, we get into a fight. So we always make a joke about that. Yeah, because it's, it's ridiculous. Like, that's what we were the most stressed about. Like, that's, mm-hmm. so, but. But I think that just shows, like, how much you both care for each other. And, like, you know, like, how much you both believe in the importance of your friendship. Yeah, I mean, that really, and, and people said it was going to change the further along we went and the, and the deeper we got into it, but the friendship will always be the most important part, 100%. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. we both agree with that. And we've had a lot of hiccups along the way, for sure. And every time we've had a hiccup, it's always been, I would sooner, and yeah. Danielle has said this, I would sooner back out and give you all a foreplay than to do anything that would ruin our friendship. Because so. a friendship like this doesn't come come around. Like, it just doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't come around for many people. Like, I feel that we are very, very fortunate yeah. that we met in mm-hmm. college because we have a very unique relationship. And so I always say, like, nothing could be worth it even when we've had like big blowouts about like things in the company that are major i've mm-hmm. always said preserving the relationship is the most important so if we need to preserve the relationship on this one like i'm good with backing down yeah nice so what is the clause entail can y'all share on that uh if we get into a fight then it go then it goes to the board i think for a vote yeah something like that oh uh, okay I'm traumatized by it. And yeah, never really it. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what happens when I'm hospitalized. Really. <laughs> okay, so you guys are both in medicine, right? Um, you guys met before med school or during med school or during work. How did you guys actually meet? We met in college. We were okay. in the same sorority. Um, we actually, we were doing something called Greek Sing, which is this like play, it's if awful. you will, that um, all pledges... <laughs> have to do um it's pretty much being really terribly hazed <laughs> like, oh. Except, oh no except except like it wasn't for me because i like to sing on a stage in front of people but for everybody else it's it's like being hazed yeah um you have to like perform in front of like the entire school like penn state fifty thousand people like you have to, like <laughs> it's not the entire school it's all wow. greek. it's all great to perform in front of all greek life so we were both in greek thing nice okay but She's she's really cutting that that that's not what happened. I'm a year I'm a year younger, so I was forced to be in Greek sing. She was pledging because I was pledging, and Danielle was the lead singer for us. And I never understood like why poor Danielle got chosen to like have to do this. You have to go to practice every day. Like she's a sophomore. Like, I feel so, like that sucks. I hope they don't choose me next year to do that. I mean, they would never. But like I don't know, I hope they don't choose me to have to come back and do this. But then I find out Danielle was like, oh, we're being assigned Pocahontas please can i be the lead <laughs> <laughs> so that's how so that's how we met because we were forced to do that every day i was miserable but i didn't realize danielle was thriving and loving every second of it <laughs> so how was y'all's um i guess dating life in college was it you know ups and downs pretty good were you in long-term relationships good question um i went into college in a long-term relationship it was my high school boyfriend like oh. last i think it's gonna work we're going to make it work, even though we're long distance. It didn't work, obviously. How long uh, did it last? Um, We broke up my second semester of freshman year. So, oh, that's quick. 
It was but you quick. had been together for like five. We had been years. together since freshman year of high school. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Um, but but like I just I don't know. I had that moment where I was like, mm -hmm. I want to spread my wings. I know that's like a that's the cliche, but it was true. That's how I felt. Right. Um, and then for the rest of college, I would say I didn't have any like formal boyfriends. There were like flings here and there, mm -hmm. um, but no formal boyfriends. It wasn't until, you know, entering the real world that I started legitimately dating. Mm -hmm. Are you in a relationship right now or are you um, just dating? I'm not. Okay. I'm not. That's why I'm the expert on. Um, yeah, we're both the expert. On running a dating app. <laughs> yep. Me too. Yeah. yeah. What, about expert what about you, Julie? Um, how was your dating life in, in college? My dating life in college was very casual, nothing serious, flings, but I didn't want to date anybody seriously in college because I felt like guys in college just were not and should not be in a place for a serious relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate to admit this, unfortunately, but I found myself in a lot of situations where I would like be talking to a guy that would then be like, yeah, just like don't tell anyone that we're talking because like I also have a girlfriend. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Oh, multiple times uh -huh. that happened to me, and I'm like not that kind of girl. So, having been the recipient of that, I was like, oh, like none of these guys are are like right. being. Yeah, I'm like I'm right. not gonna waste my time. I'll just casually date people and not looking for anything serious. Here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Jerks. Yeah, and you know, also dating also changes from when you're in college and to now, right? Because I'm mm. sure you guys have different values or look, you're looking for different things, totally. right? Totally, totally. How's yeah. that changed for you guys? So much, I'm so much less shallow now. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I, I just found that like I really need to look past like how somebody looks on the outside, and I actually think that what I've realized in my adult life is that. I feel I'm making a total, total generalization, but I feel that like the most attractive people have the least personality because they don't need to have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like okay. Just, you no, know, you're saying the most attractive people like on like the apps and not, you're not saying that both people are attractive. You're saying that. No, oh like, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. The people who are physically like the most, like uh, the most like prototypically like beautiful, like those people, like usually wind up not being super interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I realize that like when people are a little more quirky, like, you know, maybe, maybe they, maybe there's something that I would ordinarily like not be interested in, but those people have to lead with their personality. Those people are always better. Yeah, we have to tell jokes and yuck, 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 you know, all that stuff, right? <laughs> uh, top hat and all. Uh, Julie, what about you? Like how is dating your values changed or what you're looking for? Um, changed. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I'm definitely a lot less shallow, um, for sure. I think that I'm very lucky in the sense that I've dated a lot of different types of people. So I feel like I'm, as I, as I have the experience of going on dates with different types of people, I'm becoming, it's becoming more and more clear to me what I'm looking for and what I'm not looking for. Right. Um, I think that that is really important and I would encourage people that are young and single to date as many different types of people as possible because you really do learn a lot about yourself and mm -hmm. what what you're looking for in your partner. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so, okay, so you guys are in college and you're now you're in the professional world and you're dating and you're on Tinder and Bumble. Like, where, wh wh what was it when you guys were like, okay, let's start our own app because everything else, mm -hmm. I guess, sucks out there, right? Yeah, totally. It was when Julie was going to have a clinical rotation for school in New York City. And so she was staying with me for like a little under two months. And when she was staying with me, it was this exciting time because we were going to get to be together, live together again, like it was the first time since college. Um, but also it was, it was exciting for her because she wanted to date in New York. She had previously been in central Jersey and like, you know, not really having the same opportunities as single people have in New York. So we said, why don't we create a shared dating profile? And then wow. we, we can spend time together and date. We can socially date. And so we came home, we made a profile that was only pictures of the two of us and said, swipe right if you and your awesome friend want to go out with me and my awesome friend. And from there, it was like such a positive response that two weeks later, we 
we were organized as an LLC. Nice. So nice. how many dates did y'all like go on and like this like group pr profile so, profile or team profile? So we had okay, so in the first week of us doing this, so mm -hmm. she can see her login and so on my phone and on her phone, we were both logged into the account. So oh, we could yeah. see all the matches. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. And um, the first week we had <clears throat> guys either message like the photo or or you know um say something like let's go out let's do it so we were like wait this is 32 singles that 32 we, guys that could be meeting. like <laughs> yeah. in the first week in the first week wow. so we were, wow so we were like matching back and then we were in a group chat with them but it was like the two of us from danielle's account and the guy and like we kept having like sign our messages like from julie from danielle because it was coming from the same account so i like to be totally honest, like I was in, I was still in school, which was really academically like rigorous and mm -hmm. these rotations and was with Danielle. So I think we had more fun through the group chat than we really did on the dates. We had like one really um, interesting, terrible <laughs> date. Wait, was it two guys or one guy you guys would go on a date with? Two. So two. one guy would like, would match with us, but then right. he would say, I have a friend and we would move the group message. We would move the message from the app over to a group text. Uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. With four people, yeah. Got it. So what was that bad experience? Hold yeah, on. Yeah, we we, we want to hear it? this. So, <laughs> so we went out with these two guys. One of them was smoking. Uh-oh. Brad Pitt. Mo not. Yeah, we were like, we were like shot him in the beginning, which I actually hate when girls do that. But we were like, no, I want him, no, I want him. And then we we're like, all right, fine, you can have him. Like, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> They're all hilarious in the group chat, though. He had a really. He good was really funny. Like, he was the one getting us amped about the date. And of course, as it turns out, the really smoking one was like absolutely mute. Did not have anything to say. <laughs> said four words probably the entire date. Looked really pretty, but had nothing to offer. <laughs> and he was the funny one in the group text. No. no. He was just the hot one that he we was were the like, hot one. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I got that confused. In high school, we had an expression for him. That would be, he's a noodle. It's, noodle. It's uncooked pasta, brings nothing to the table. Throw it against the wall, it just kind of slides down. <laughs> so, so, he was, so he was not interesting at all. And then the other one, um, he was extra. He just was over the top and it was it was to the point where by the end of the day like there were we felt creepy vibes um Ooh. but it was so fun because we had each other under the to be like under the table like like doing like tapping each other and like texting each other and like we had like our own little secret language that we came up with before the date you know how we were gonna end the date and everything mm -hmm. yeah it was time to go it was either i was gonna say I have to be up early to visit my grandma tomorrow or Danielle was going to say, Julie, aren't you going to visit your grandma tomorrow when it was, <laughs> so we each had like the code, um, ready to go. And the, the guy who was like extra friendly, he, he was like, it was, it was not borderline inappropriate. Like it was inappropriate. He was, he was a lot. And we were downtown taking an Uber back up to the Upper East side. And he only lives like three blocks from Danielle. So he asked if we, if he could split the Uber with us. Um, and we said yes because we just felt like we so awkward. We were like, how do you say no when you're going to the same place? So it was a horrific date. Had I been on that alone with either of those two guys, one, I would have fallen asleep because he had nothing to say. And the other one, I would have been so terrified the entire time that I was going to get abducted probably <laughs> um, to another planet because he was on another planet. Um, but we like still laugh about that. And it's one of the best dates we've been on actually because it's oh, a wow. hilarious story it was like, a night out it was a night yeah. out yeah two friends and we have a funny story to tell about it. it we have a lot of funny memories from the night yeah yeah so i guess so within three weeks you guys created that llc sorry so, so within three weeks of of you guys doing that group um dating profile you created your llc mm -hmm. yeah the goal, that's awesome the goal was not to create an llc the goal was we were trying this out because we thought it'd be fun and then mm -hmm. the response we got was the proof of concept that it would be successful. And then it became like, I, I just thought it was hilarious that guys were like eating this up. They were saying, you girls are changing the dating game. 
you girl, this should be an app. And I just thought it was funny. So I was sending screenshots to my family being like, how ridiculous is this that Danielle and I literally have 32 match, 32 guys in a week. Uh -huh. My brother would like not stop calling and texting us. And he was like, you need to make this an app because somebody else will if you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. what I like about your app is I think that if, if I'm single and, you know, it's very, it's very nerve wracking going on a date, right? It's, I get nervous, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what to say, but if I'm with a buddy of mine or a friend like Emma, oh my gosh, it just makes it more fun. That's, that's what I think. Um, and yeah. safety too. Safety is good as well. Right. And also maybe if someone just got out of a divorce, it's been married for like 15 years and don't know how to date then yeah, I'll bring a buddy with me and I can help him out. So that's that's what I got from the app. I don't know what you got, um, Emma, from the concept. Yeah, that's what I got too, except, and then I, like, I, um, I'm al already, like, awkward on dates, and then I was like, oh, crap, now I have to be awkward in front of my friend, but I was like, at least this friend, like, will forgive me, yeah. and maybe, like, give me tips. It won't be Zorik, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Um, but so, but so. Zorik will judge me. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, but he'll bring you <laughs> oh, I will. Then, I'll be pressing buttons. Offer, just like turn yeah, off. I know. Like that was a weird line. <laughs> yeah. So, um, talk to talk to us about like um, how long did it take to make the app? And and because there's so many apps out there. There's Tinder. There's Bumble. And there's some process, right? There's some ideation process, and you got you got to put it on paper. Like, how was what was that process like? Yeah. Um, so we definitely. Um, did not, we definitely thought it was going to happen a lot faster than it did. We didn't give enough time. Mm -hmm. The timeline was a very tight one. Like we decided, we, we researched different app developers. When we finally decided who we were going to go with, we they had them start building the app in March. And we were like by uh, May, June, like it'll launch and we'll have like a summer launch. It'll be great. Um, which is ridiculous looking back on it now. And we had a launch party before it launched. But not that. We ended up having a launch party in the beginning of October. Okay. And mm -hmm. we launched towards the end of October. Um, because you don't, you, we didn't take into account the fact that they're going to send us back like the beta version of the app and we're going to have mm -hmm. feedback. It's not going to be perfect. We're going to have, you know, we don't love this button here. Can you do it this way instead? And that all that takes time. So, I would, if anyone is listening who's building an app or thinking about it, I would say like, you know, give yourself more time than you think you're going to need because it doesn't happen as fast as you think, especially when your developers are in another country like ours are, ours are in India. So the time, the time difference is really drastic. Yeah. And get them the feedback, but they don't see it until they come to the office the next day. So it's 10 a.m. for us, but for them, they're out of the, it's like they're out of the office. So it took longer than we had anticipated. Um, the good thing is that I'm a freaky type A person. So I would like create these crazy documents with like really um, detailed notes and stuff, like basically right when they would give us the stuff back. So we got everything back to them in like a timely way, but it took, uh, I mean, it still was pretty fast, right? March to October is still pretty yeah. quick, but. Yeah, that, that's pretty quick. Um, yeah. So um, how do you manage safety in the app? Cause that's a big deal too around other apps. Yeah, and I think that safety means more than just um, not danger. Like mm -hmm. I think safety also means health um, and also means um, making sure, especially during these times, that people are staying safe in the sense of they're, they're, they're dating in a socially distant or socially responsible way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, we couldn't call ourselves healthcare providers if we weren't making sure that mm -hmm. there was a way for people in the app to meet in a safe way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, although safety is really, really important to us in terms of the body system and making sure that a, another person is there to watch your drink so it doesn't get spiked and making sure that someone's there to say, no, that person's acting a little creepy, don't let him walk you home. Um, it has become really even more important to us, like now that we're not, not more important, but equally as important now that COVID unexpectedly has arisen um, that we make sure that the users can date in a safe way. So we are in the process of um, getting the ball rolling with video integration in the app, mm -hmm. um, it's something that we still need funding for. So um, we're doing like a crowdfunding campaign so that we can get funding for it. But we want people to use that video chat, chat function within the app 
get to know one another virtually if it's not safe to meet in real life. Mm-hmm. Right. And also for people to kind of have like a pre-screening. So yeah. you know, being on video before they actually meet in real life. Sometimes video can tell you a lot about a person. You might not waste your time going out yeah. in real life. Gotcha. Right. There's a lot of... Oh, go I think ahead. you guys did a good job like with your website, like your safety features and like safety ideas on your website itself. Um, Cause I think that you guys like covered, you know, like just the basic guidelines of like how to use the foreplay app, like make sure you're going with your buddy, like don't go without your buddy. Otherwise like reschedule the date or cancel the date. Um, and then I love that you guys were like, and Hey, guess what? Like if you want to have sex on the first date, if that's your thing, go for it. And if you're going to have sex, make sure you use protection. And then here's some some resources in case, like, things, you know, happen and that you need to take care of. So I felt like you guys are, like, trying your best and you are doing your best when it comes to, like, make like making sure that the person using your app is, like, as well informed as they can be. Because I do think some of those things are common sense. But I think that sometimes, like, and because of what we do, it's common sense to us and it's not common sense to everyone. And so just like having the reminder of you need to make sure you're being safe for yourself and for the people around you, like, it's just a great reminder. So I, I have to give you all props on that. I really loved that. Mm-hmm. I thought like your website was amazing. Thank you. I mean, there's a lot of subtle, well, to go off, uh, directly off of the, the sex aspect of it. One statistic that I found that I thought was crazy is that, of women who have sex on the first date with a stranger, mm-hmm. it's about 35% don't use a condom. So they're having sex on the first date and 35% are not using a condom, which is a really high number. And this isn't us like saying this just to sound good, like we practice in, in primary care. So I have a lot of experiences with my patients that have these sexually transmitted diseases and they don't understand how they got it like they they're like so how else can i get this other than sex and i'm like no this is the only way you can get it yeah so i mean a big part is is education right i mean knowledge is power right like you need to know about things so we really try to make it a goal to educate uh to create educated consumers but there's a lot of subtleties in the app as well to promote safety like you do it with your friend so your friend has to hold you accountable so there's hopefully going to be less catfishing because you mm-hmm. feel harder to lie about who you are and what you look like when you are doing it with your friend another thing we have is which was inspired by the fact that like i was seeing some of the same creepy guys on multiple apps and i didn't want to see them anymore so we created like a cold shoulder feature where you can block somebody um, yes, mm-hmm. I saw that and I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, you can block them, but what was even better is you can avoid them. So blocking is like, I've seen them, they offended me, I'm blocking them. Avoiding is like, I never, w- I, I don't want to be on the dating apps because I don't want to see my ex. Don't worry, you can avoid them. You'll never mm-hmm. pass with them. You never have to see them on the app. I think that's awesome. Unless they like change their number and then you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So let's say I sign up with Emma and for those that haven't used the app, what's next? So Emma and I sign up, we make a profile. What's, what's the next step for us? So you make a profile, you add pictures of yourself. You could add videos as well. And then you fill out your preferences. So what you're looking for, who you are and what you're looking for. Mm. So... There's a portion of the app that allows you to do um, free text. So, so you would able you would be able to write actually a description of who you are and write a description of who you're looking for. But there's also a part of the app um, that allows you to um, select like predetermined um, categories, like you are a man and a woman, or you are two women, or you are two men, um, you're a couple, or your friend. Um, So you can select who you are and then who you're looking for. You can select preferences like what city they're in. Um, And we actually, what we do is we allow you to pick two cities. So you could have, you could be interested in people in New York and you could be interested in people in London. Um, You can, and then you also can pick um, what type of team you're looking for. So are you a couple seeking another couple? Are you two single friends seeking two single people? You can put that in there as well. Hmm. And so, um, just to clarify, because Zorik and I did create a team together, um, are you, like, is it, so, you know, we're both straight, so we, I would want a guy, he would want a girl, and so, like, that is possible, too? Other, that would be other okay. teams. Other co- yeah, so you would, you would um, assign yourself as a co-ed team, and then you would okay. be 
looking for other co-ed teams. Cool. Yeah. And so and we're so let's say that the guy wants to match with me on the other team, but the girl doesn't want to match with Zorik. Obviously. Cool. Typical. Obviously. <laughs> so just to clarify, like all four of us have or at least, you know, like the two pairs have to match, right? Right. Okay. I don't think so, so because I should support Emma and I should go on the date for you, you know? Absolutely. Couldn't yeah. agree more. I'm all about I'm all about being a good wingman, yeah. wing woman, wing person. I'm all about that. <laughs> So when we, so to your point, there's no, there's no, I'm matching with them and you're matching with, I'm matching with this person. You're matching with that person. It's mm -hmm. I'm down to go out with these two people. Are you? Yeah, I am too. Hopefully they are. So to support and encourage the being a good wingman, Zarg, this is for you. We put a pop up in. So if, <laughs> um, if Emma, you know, swipes right and wants to go out with these two people and you get the people and you swipe left and you get the thumbs down, you'll get a pop up that says, you know, your Emma already gave the thumbs up. Are you sure that you don't want to do a double take? And then your mm -hmm. options are fine, I'll be wingman, or no, I'm selfish. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so we're really encouraging people to be women because you never know who you're going exactly. you know yeah. what, what's going to be of the night. You might be like, oh, I'll be wingman. Guarantee you that's that's the night you'll you'll meet someone that you like fall in love with. Yeah. Or meet someone you just like have a good conversation with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, love that I'm being selfish. <laughs> so, so um after your launch, who's been uh gravitating to to your app? More is it more women, men? Is it a different a specific age group? Um who likes yeah. it so far? Yeah. The Gen Zennials, they're all oh, really? about foreplay. Yeah. So our biggest age group so like eighteen to thirty two is the biggest age group, but we the sweet spot is like twenty three to twenty seven. Oh. Um, they they make up the largest population. They make up the largest portion, like of that Gen Zennial group. Um, and then um, I would say naturally, London, shockingly, New York and LA users are are the the most um, the the highest number on the app. I mean, if you get me someone that's like you know British royalty, I'll put London <laughs> on my second city. <laughs> Oh, the they are British? so hot. They we, are. We changed our preferences to be like, what's it like in London to be on foreplay? I need to move. To, I'm moving to yeah. London. Yes, no, and they they love me in London. Like they love this little short Latin woman, and I'm like, yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, I'll teach you Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, in terms of the the genders, in the beginning, we were so there were so many guys on the app, and oh. I was a little because I was like, oh my God, there's so many guys and there's not that many girls. And I don't know what changed in the past like month, but we have so many girls, girls on. Like, I, I just, I want to like text all my guy friends from high school, from college and just be like, there are so many girls on straight. <laughs> wow. We need the guys. Yeah, there are so many straight girls. And we really want to expand. Like we we we're we're mm -hmm. so happy that there are straight girls. I mean, we're straight girls. So we we knew it was a good idea. So we we know that, you know, it makes sense to us that they think it's a good idea, but we really do want the user base to be broader and more mm -hmm. diverse. Yeah. yeah. So right. you're saying you guys need more uh, men on the app, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's typical for dating. I think I think Emma, we've done some research on this, but it's it's typically women who go on apps. Even we have mm -hmm. um, we have mixers local here in Dallas. It's always you know thirty women and like five guys, and we're like, oh my gosh, where yeah. are all the dudes? Uh, but yeah, that's just the industry. Um, but how has COVID kind of um, has it increased your numbers since COVID hap started, or how has it affected you guys? COVID has increased the numbers. Yeah, yeah. COVID. COVID, I think, has made people really feel like they need connection. I think that people are now matching internationally, which is fascinating to us. We never even thought that such a thing would happen. But what we're noticing is that people in our country are matching with people in the UK. And so our, the assumption is that they're, they're virtually dating, like they're going on a double date um, through video. So it's it's drastically changed the numbers. It's hard to tell if that's because we've picked up speed as a legitimate company or if it's because of COVID because those two things have happened simultaneously. Mm -hmm. 
but we really have seen some really interesting things like people matching internationally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we talked about Emma, um, how they got started. What's next for you guys? I think you talked about video, but yeah. any other features? Uh yeah, video, video is definitely the, the big thing that we're going to be focusing on. I mean, that's short term. Long, you know, in the, in the very, very far out future, we really have a vision for Foreplay to be more than just a dating app. Like we really want it to be a way for people to just in general be more social because we do feel like people just are less social, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's more difficult to be social. It's very easy to just like stay home and watch a really interesting documentary or not go out, um, yeah. not wanna put yourself out there. So we're hoping to become more of like a community that encourages people to just be more social, whether that means you and your single friend are going to this event that we planned so that you can meet other single people romantically or as a friend, whether it's people who are divorced, like you mentioned before, or who are widowed, who are nervous to get back out there, mm -hmm. um, going with a friend to, to meet new people, networking, whatever the case may be. Like the long-term goal is for us to be more than an app and for us to be a social club, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great because I think um, single people, we do need, you know, a club. We, it's rough out there, right? I mean, y you had a day tonight. I mean, it just, uh, there's a lot of ups and downs and stuff like that. Um, right. Yeah. What else, Emma? Um, I, think, I think that's it. I think we've said it all. Honestly. Yeah. I feel like your app is, uh, like, I, I really like the app. And let me be honest, like, like I'm not a fan of dating apps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I, like, uh, like, I got on y'all's app, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. And, like, I think, you know, and, like, I reached out, I reached out to, you know, who it is, Zorik, it's Kaylee. Yeah. I reached out to Kaylee, and I was like, Kaylee, would you be interested in an app where you and I have to team up and go on double dates? with two other men and she's like really and i was like yes she's like yeah i'm, I'm yeah. down i was like okay <laughs> yeah. that's awesome that's nice. amazing nice um i have one more question though um so it's very difficult to get the word out with any business like what are you guys doing to to kind of spread the word I'm obviously visiting us but you guys doing yeah. other things uh yeah, yeah, totally. Right now, we actually, we just came up with a promotion. So we started a promotion last week called Tipsy Tuesday. What we're trying to do is we're trying to grow the, grow the user base um, without spending a ton of money. And so we are sponsoring a date every Tuesday in New York. That's um, good. We're doing it in New York. We're trying to build density like in New York right now. Um, so we're sponsoring a date uh, every Tuesday. We pick a match from the New York City metropolitan area and we offer them five different options to go on a double date. So they're all, we're trying to promote outdoor dating. So they're all outdoor options. Mm -hmm. And um, the thought behind that is that, you know, if people are, you know, people will be incentivized to team up with a friend, like to, to ask their friends to, to join foreplay and become their teammates. And then be active on foreplay. And be active knowing right. that chance that you know if you are active on the app that there's a possibility that you'll get a free date um we have a lot of exciting things that we're offering yeah so that's that's awesome. one way. and then you know just trying to do like interviews like this um trying to get stuff on our social media that like gets reposted on other people's social media um that's the key like if we post funny content especially if we post funny content that kind of content usually gets reposted so that's mm -hmm. kind of like a life hack for us yes. yeah i mean also we we really like use our resources so we you have to have thick skin if you're gonna start anything right because people will put you down people will also build you up people will like your idea people won't like it so you have to be open to any criticism that you get so we really utilize our friends we really ask them like to be honest with us and um our good friend Lindsay told us like you know your instagram is really static like it needs to be a little bit more dynamic like put some more videos like put yourself yeah. on there and like we we did it because we took our advice because we had nothing to lose and it actually got a really positive response. Nice. So listening to other people is actually like a huge part of, of our success. Totally. And not being discouraged. You know, you're going to get a lot of no's before you get a yes. And then a few weeks ago, we woke up. My mom called me and she's like, I can't wait any longer. Like I was on Elite Daily last night and they wrote an article about dating apps to try in 2020 and they listed you first. And we were like, 
what? Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's but, awesome. Like we didn't even know that was going to happen because it's like you hustle and you hustle and you don't see, it's not fruitful right away. You don't see like the benefit. Right. And then like one day that happens and it's like, wow, it's not all for nothing, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Well, I have a good feeling about you guys. I think you guys are going to mm-hmm. blow up like any, any second now. That's um, so nice. Yeah, sure. um, I know it's a grind, but it's gonna be worth it in, in the end for sure. And you're like you're yeah, you're bringing sure. people together, and you know there's there's also some rewarding things about that, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean it's definitely it's definitely like um, bringing people together is like a huge thing for us. Like we are both very social people, so seeing that people are matching, seeing that people who we know are joining the app and matching that gets us excited that we're like, Oh, like we know that person and like they matched. So yeah, thank you. But thank you for the positive. Yeah. um, That's really encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. So Emma, what did you learn from, from them throughout this whole conversation? Uh, well, non dating related, you make sure that you get a very gentle nurse to give you a COVID test. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Not not dating related mm-hmm. and dating related. Um, like I had a few questions about the app and you guys answered them. Like the co-ed teams and all of that stuff. Yeah, I love it. And I didn't know that that statistic about like the STD. Like that's kind of oh, yeah. scary. Mm. Oh, yeah. That scares me. Um, I learned a couple things. I think Emma, we should use the whole visit grandma excuse when we're yes. when we meet somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, Never. It, and, a yeah. <laughs> and the noodle term, I think I like that term. He's a noodle. <laughs> we we yeah. taught you a term, so and then yeah. you guys taught us a term. Yeah. I learned something. Before the pot what what? I would like to share I learned something very valuable. So central time means one hour ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Wait, what time is it there? 10.03. No, it's okay, yeah, it's it's yeah, 9.03 with us, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so... I, I thought it was two hours, too. <laughs> <laughs> so how can everyone find you, uh, your app? So everybody can find us um, by going to the App Store or Google Play. Uh, the app is called Fourplay, F-O-U-R-P-L-A-Y. And then you can also find us on social media. We are on Instagram. That's our that's our biggest platform, at Fourplay Social. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else, Emma? You want to say to them? No, I'm just. No. I'm just excited. I got to meet y'all. Yeah, you guys. Uh, good uh, things are coming, guys. I feel it. So. Thank you. So. If any of your, if any of your listeners sign up, they should definitely use your promo code Date Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Date Podcast. Please subscribe and review if you liked what you hear. Send us an email at hello at datepodcast.com for any questions, comments, or show topics you'd like for us to discuss. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Most importantly, tell your friends about our show. 